What drives technology and innovation? The advances in technology seem to currently accelerate at an almost exponential rate. There also seem to be times in history where little progress was being made and others where great leaps were made rather rapidly. Is there any reason for this or is it just random chance? Well, it appears there are several things which can drive technological change. The first, most obvious one, is some form of driving need. A crop failure, an earthquake, or some other form of natural disaster all push a society to take some radical steps and risks that in normal times wouldn't have actually been considered. It also can be the case in wars, where a defence against a new weapon is needed or the threat of invasion. There is a question, however, whether this is an overall increase in the pace of technological development, whether resources both physical and intellectual are being diverted from other projects, leading to a reduction in the pace of change in those under-resourced areas. Second, is that for some areas to advance, sometimes an underlying technology is needed, such as a glass lens is required before an optical microscope can be invented. But, once the glass lens is created, microscopes and telescopes can be created. Those in turn can make discoveries of our solar system or bacterial life. One key technological development can free up the development of a whole raft of others, leading to rapid progress in a whole range of different areas. The third area is having a society that promotes, or at least doesn't inhibit technology. Religions, mythologies, superstitions can slow or block development if allowed to have an undue influence. The opposite of this is a society and culture which values knowledge, innovation and change is prepared to accept new ideas and new technology in an open manner and where being an innovator is seen as socially acceptable and not some kind of freak or pariah. In addition to this is a predictably stable society that enables people to think, to plan and invest in the long term. Now, this may seem the exact opposite of the first point, where conflict may drive change. It's not quite the same. It's not just the absence of conflict that enables long-term planning, but the absence of the threat of conflict. Where the threat exists, the society will feel the need to invest resources in fortifications, in training, in equipment of armed forces. Where that threat is at a minimal level, resources can be redirected towards general technological development. Additionally, why build some big, expensive, complicated machine if somebody may invade and destroy it just next year? And the final area is jealousy or rivalry between states, where rapid growth, change and technology in another country promotes a desire for a similar advance in your own country. Probably the best example of this is the space race, where both politicians and individual scientists were highly motivated to push the boundaries and attempt to launch rockets into space and eventually land a person on the moon. There is no doubt without this competition, the development of space technology would have never happened so quickly. Part of the issue though, here is once a technology has been developed, it is very difficult to actually keep it secret. It is no longer secret, it can be copied, adapted and even improved upon. It's generally down to the cost of developing a new technology. Anything that valuable to make it worthwhile developing has to be widely implemented. This has been going on for longer than you might actually imagine. Rome was actually engaged in several wars with the Carthaginians called the Punic Wars. Carthage was based across the Mediterranean Sea in Africa. Whilst it couldn't rival the equipment and training of the Roman army, its navy was far superior to the rather feeble Roman navy at the time. And so it controlled seaborne trade, could land troops where they wanted, they could raid coastal areas before any Roman support could reach the region. However, when a Carthaginian ship was wrecked on the Roman shore, it was then copied and mass produced, and the Romans had a navy that rivaled that of their enemies. And with the addition of a corvus as kind of a spiked boarding plank, they could carry their land fighting techniques onto the sea. Now with global communications and multinational companies, technology is no longer restricted by national boundaries or even regions. We may now be entering a new era of technology and innovation.